Well, yeah. But I, I just put that on there because I don't know what time to be. Yeah. You want to grab it? Sure. What I needed to do was uh, zoom in and do that kind of stuff. When I, when I show measurements. You're at 501. It's already online. Oh, okay. Marianne, hey! <clears throat> Just gonna wait for a few minutes for everybody to get on here before we start. So, unless he gets here for his board. All right. Who's here? Custom items. Uh, oh, Anna, I did get your email um, and the letters that you needed. I do not make them like that. Um, your best bet would be to have somebody that has a custom engraver or CNC machine to make you those. Yeah, that would be um, very difficult for me to pull off on a bandsaw. So I'm sorry, but I, I can't make that. Um, I mean, I can make it. <laughs> it's gonna come out like that, like the pictures that you sent me. Okay, we get, do we have people here? No, Celine from Montreal says, hello. Celine, it is always great to see you. Lauren Law 123, she's going to teach us how to read a tape. I'm, I so need this. Yes, and with no math, okay? We're going to add fractions and subtract fractions without any math. I, okay. I know you don't see I how don't that's see possible. How that's yet, possible. I don't even see how that's possible. possible. And I'm with you all the time. Um, let's see. Celine from Montreal is the one that sprained her ankle. She said the sprained ankle lady. Oh, yes, Celine, I know who you are. We are, we are friends. And I'm glad that you're, uh, is your ankle feeling better? Um, Alabama says, hey, or user one, two, three, Alabama. Says, hey, from Alabama, sorry. Hello to Alabama. Okay, so but when we start off here, there are a, few di a couple different types of measuring tapes. Get to where you can see both of these. Got it. Okay, so this one here is the one that I use because I already know what the number, the little marks mean. This one here is the type that you would get if you are just learning, my hands are shaking. <laughs> if you're just learning how to read a tape measure, uh, solved. There we go. this is a great tool because it already tells you what every other line means. That means the ones that are not labeled are sixteenths. That doesn't even matter to us right now because we are going to add and subtract fractions without even adding and subtracting them. And this is how you do it. So let's just take a random measurement. I want to I want to add. Let's see. I'm going to measure with this table. And this table, come over up here, is 35 and 13 sixteenths. Okay, and if you don't see that. I don't. Okay, right here. Much better, thank you. So the little line after the three quarter mark is a 13 sixteenths. Now if you say, hey, I need a 30, 33 and a quarter inch door. How much am I cutting off? Well, you just mark it there and then you measure it this way. And you say, well, I'm cutting off two inches, two and five eighths of an inch, okay? Everybody following me there? So let's just say I want to add the width of this door, which was 35 and 13 sixteenths. 
We're just going to throw a random number out here. How about we're going to add 4 and 5 eighths, okay? This looks like a pretty difficult, like, what do you do? You don't even have to add it. This is what you do, okay? You take and you go, you measure out 4 and 5 eighths, put a mark at your 4 and 5 eighths mark. This is just random numbers so that you can learn how to not have to add or subtract to add or subtract fractions. So from here, from this point to this point, back up a little bit so they can see. I'm seeing it. So from this point to this point is four and five eighths. So our, our problem here is, can you zoom in on that? It's 35 and 13 sixteenths, and we want to add four and five eighths. We've drawn out how much four and five eighths is, okay? Look how easy this is. We go like this, 35, we get to the 35 and 13 sixteenths mark. We put it on the start mark of where we marked our four and five eighths. And then we just look right here. That's right here between the three eighths and the half inch mark, which all these little unmarked numbers are sixteenths. So they're one, three, five, seven. So that answer without having to add anything is 40 and 7 sixteenths. Does that make sense to everybody? Come around here so they can see the itch. Yeah, let's go over the basics. Sorry, you guys. I just <laughs> ran in the door from work. I didn't want to be late. And, um, okay, so what we're doing is we're teaching you how to add fractions, whether they're a sixteenth or they're an eighth or they're five sixteenths or three quarters. You can add any fraction that is in the realm of a tape measure um, without having to do math. You can simply, like I said, you can, if I want to add, if I have a um, five sixteenths, right? And I'd like to add seven sixteenths. Come back down here so you can see. Okay. So if we have five sixteenths, I'm just going to start right here. Five sixteenths. Well, I'm going to start at the 10 mark because I can actually lay it down. So every inch is the same. So we have five sixteenths. It is the 16th mark right between the quarter inch and the three eighths. We want to add that plus another seven sixteenths. Then we're just going to go like this. Seven sixteenths and start back from the, our, our point. Now we have three quarters. You see how I didn't have to do math. I was just able to write this down. Hold on, let me find where the dog went. Sorry guys, dog is escaping. Kona, hey, come here, little sniffer. Okay, so uh, um, also another, you see this is graph paper? So most graph paper already comes in increments of one inch. So you see how these, this line, this line here matches with this line and that is one inch. So each of these squares is a quarter inch. So that might help you for planning your projects. But again, to add, you can also do it another way. Where is, oh, looking for my tape that's on my hip. You can use two tape measures side by side. Let's say we want to add 15 and an eighth plus 10 and five eighths. Okay, we have 15 and an eighth. We put this on our eighth inch mark, which is right, this is difficult to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we put that on eighth mark and we go 10 and five eighths, okay? We find our five eighths. That's right at 26 and three quarters. So we've just added fractions without adding fractions. Does anybody have any questions so far on this? Um, there's no reggae in the shop tonight, question mark. Um, no reggae in the shop tonight, I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really need to go metric so much easier. I do agree on the metrics, <laughs> but this is what we're stuck with as Americans. Uh, Celine Montreal says, I feel so smart now. I was doing that already. Oh, you were, Celine. See, that's an excellent way to do it because when you get, this will probably help if I use a marker. 
Yeah. So, if we're doing adding fractions, 3 and 5 eighths plus 4 and 9 sixteenths, I, I personally already know that I can make these go, um, all you do is to change these into the same thing, I cannot change 9 sixteenths into eighths, but I can change eighths into sixteenths. So I already know that this is 10 sixteenths, which would make this 19 sixteenths, which makes one whole inch and three sixteenths left over. So it would be eight and three sixteenths. That's because I already know how to reduce fractions, okay? But if you don't know how to reduce fractions, because that's math. Because that's math. <laughs> that's totally fine. You don't have to be a math whiz to do fractions. Because, like I said, is if you want to measure out, if you have seven inches, right, and you want to add another four and a half inches, you just put, you measure out your four and a half. Put a line, okay? It went from this point to this point is my four and a half. Plus seven. I've got 11 and a half because we can just measure to it. Come down here so they can see the entire thing. There we go. So I'm trying to add whatever you want to add. You can do this. And also if you have graph paper, like I said, is each one of these little squares is a quarter inch by a quarter inch. Hey, GS Sweeney. <laughs> so without having to reduce fractions, or add any kind of fractions, all you need to do is take your first measurement, let's say it's 10 inches, and let's say 10 inches is what you want to add or subtract. This works for subtraction as well. So if I have, let's just say 12 inches, 12 inches and 5 eighths, 12 and 5 eighths would actually be my measurement, right? So if I, that would be here. Doesn't matter what this is. All their each each um, inch breaks down to be the same. So if I had twelve and five eighths, and I want to minus three eighths, I could either measure out three eighths with my tape measure. Look down here. I could measure three eighths. This is my starting point. I could measure three eighths from point to point, or since they're both in eighths. Five minus three is what, two? Two eighths, that's we're subtracting a quarter inch. Okay, um, the easiest way when I get jumbled up and I don't wanna do a bunch of math or anything like that, to add absolutely anything, um, like when I lay out pieces for doors, um, a lot of times I have to add in a certain amount depending on the type of door I'm making. So what I do is I always make myself my mark. If it's a half inch, I already know that from this mark to right here, without even having to measure these squares, I already know it's a half inch. See that? Because these squares are all a quarter of an inch. So again, if you wanna know what a fraction addition or subtraction is, you just need to start off with what, you're, with what you already have, okay? So let's say 12 and a half. We're going to put it right here. Sorry, you guys. I am not um, a pro teacher, but I am pro at measurements. Okay, 12 and a half. Let's add 3 and 9 sixteenths. So we know that this is our 12 and a half mark. So now we're just going to start over from here and add what? What did I say? 3 and 9 sixteenths. Now, it would help if I wasn't using a big fat marker because these are getting pretty small, but you guys can see what I mean. Three and nine sixteenths would be here. So if this is 12 and a half, then I go ahead and put my tape right on the 12 and a half mark. And then here with it added is 15 and 15 sixteenths. Can you see that there? And we know that this is a 15 sixteenths because it's the last sixteenth before another inch. Because all of these small little lines, let's refer back up to here. All of the small, smallest lines on your tape measure that are not marked, if you have this type of tape measure, 
All the ones in between are sixteenths. So let's see if you guys have any questions so far. Hey, Logan. Um, look like seven sixteenths. Yeah, um, it's not. This is a fat marker, which I'm just using the marker because it's kind of hard to see lines on a pencil. Yes, I do have a three dots tattoo. That was seven sixteenths. No, that was, f uh, <laughs> no, it was not. I think I'm using the first number as a count. Get a dual tape measure, calculate a metric, then convert to imperial. That, uh, Megolas, that sounds um, a little bit more difficult. <laughs> uh, what about the mill? You talking about millimeter? Yeah, we don't do millimeters. Uh, okay. Oh, I said 9 sixteenths and Mark 7 sixteenths. My bad. Just use centimeters. Uh, we can't do that here in America for um, everybody that's on that. And OG Brandon, I have not tried switching to metric, although I think it is easier. So for those of you who are suggesting metric, I do agree. But that's not going to teach anybody how to add fractions that's gonna to have to have them learn the metric system, which I do agree is easier. But for shits and giggles, for us Americans, when trying to add fractions, okay, we have all these fractions here, and some people are getting lost on, well, what do I do with the fraction? Well, you don't really have to do anything with it. If you take your tape measure and you mark out, let's say it's, you know, you wanna add a, a quarter inch to 11 sixteenths, okay? So you can just draw out here, down here. Let's see, we have, I'm gonna start here. Quarter inch, okay? We wanna add 11 sixteenths. I'm gonna move my starting point of an inch. It doesn't matter if you use three, four, whatever you use. So I'm gonna go to my 11 sixteenths mark, which I already know is, for here's for the, is right before the three quarter mark because three quarters is 12 sixteenths, okay? So if I'm adding a quarter inch plus 11 sixteenths, it's really easy, there it is, it's 15 sixteenths. Because I started here, I put in my quarter inch, I moved my starting point over past that quarter inch so I can just simply mark 11 sixteenths. So now I have my start, my stopping point, I take my start point back, here's my answer, 15 sixteenths. Okay, questions? Um, I had STEM, algebra, pre-cal, statistics, physics, graduate with honors. Why can't I get it? Why can't you get it? Um, I'm not sure. Did, did, did this make sense to you, what I just did? The person that asked that? That's G. Sweeney. Okay, S Sweeney, did this make sense to you? To mark out on paper or on a piece of wood, whatever, the number that you either want to add or subtract, whatever that number is, whether it's an inch and in something or it's just within an inch, if you mark that out and put that at the end of the measurement that you're trying to add, okay? So if I'm trying to add 12 and a half and I wanna add three and a half, I just simply have to do like this. Start somewhere, mark, three and a half, and then I put my 12 and a half, since that's what I'm starting to add, 12 and a half plus three and a half, and there's my answer, 16. I didn't have to add anything. You really can do this without doing any math at all, so don't feel intimidated if you don't know fractions. I didn't do well in algebra, <laughs> but I can do this stuff all day because I learned how to do this as well, or if I'm just, being lazy and don't want to do the math in my mind, I just do this. It's very easy. Arsenic Neptune says get into 64ths. Arsenic Neptune, you want to get into 64ths? Let's do that. So every space in between a 16th is a 32nd, okay? If you had two spaces in between each 16th, and that is right inside this little area here, those are 64 fourths. What 64 sixteenths, 30 seconds all are is just how many pieces 
that this particular inch is broken down into. A standard tape measure that you're gonna find around is gonna be broken into sixteenths. Most of you aren't gonna do that fine of work where you ever need to go beyond uh, smaller than a sixteenth to like a 32nd or a 64. It is very rare in my 25 years of cabinet making that I've ever really had to use 30 seconds or 64 Um Sometimes they can add up if everything has to be precise in a, in a row or in a line, but for the most part, that's not what um, most people are using that are doing things like this. Along those lines, townhome fixer upper, how much spacing do you typically need when you're installing cabinets or measuring for that space? Um, who was that? That was townhome fixer upper. Townhome fixer upper. Um, measuring exactly for what? Are you measuring wall to wall cabinetry? If so, I would leave. If your if your wall to wall is let's say eight feet, I would minus an inch, so I have a half inch and a half inch of spacing um, left after the run of cabinets is there which can allow for scribe molding um, or to be scribed into the wall. If you don't know what scribe is, scribe is a very small, thin piece of trim that usually is applied to the front of the cabinet and extended out to the wall so it has a really finished built-in look. Uh, there are cabinet makers and some styles of cabinetry where they won't add the molding. They'll actually make the cabinet faces just a little bit bigger than the whole size so that it can be trimmed exactly to fit that wall. And that's called scribing it. Woodchuckers wants to know what do you typically typically make in your shop? Uh, what do I typically make in my shop? Well, it was for the past 25 years, cabinets, custom cabinetry. And now that I'm not building custom cabinetry anymore, um, I am building whatever I feel like. So it's <laughs> kind of fun. Uh, Scott Cannon, right, I've aced the tape measure, but don't know math. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's all you need. You'd, I mean, if, if you can master the tape measure, that's it. And it's really not that difficult if you familiarize yourself by getting one of these types of tapes where everything is already marked out for you. And if you use these tricks, th these tips and tricks that I'm giving you can be used with anything. Uh, let's say you want to make a planter box, okay, and you you say it can only be 24 inches wide. And let's say you have material that you're going to use for the sides that are three quarters and three quarters. Well, what's three quarters and three quarters? Well, you can put them together. Come down here. You just find a starting point, okay? So at the five, that's our starting point. I'm going to go over to three quarters. This is our three quarters. And then I'm gonna put my starting point right on that same line and measure over another three quarters. And then move my starting point back over here and these two together is what it is, one inch and a half. A lot of times it's also easy to think of, if you're not adding sixteenths or eighths and you're just adding quarters, half, three quarters, things like that. You can think of it like a dollar bill, four quarters in a dollar bill. Here's one quarter, here's two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, okay? So three of these is basically 75 cents, which is the way that I think of it in my mind, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with measuring. It's just simply quarters. And if something is a quarter, that means there are four pieces total. So that would be one quarter. This would be two quarters, and this would be three quarters. And it does not say two quarters, it says one half because that fraction here is properly reduced. And again, you don't have to know math, you don't have to know anything about fractions if you measure them out and put down your mark. Um, let me see. Um... Joe O'Reilly 8, thanks for teaching in rougher measures. You may use plus or minus in a 1 8th, not for cabinetry, but I'm sure it goes on goo, but I don't know what else happened. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, in cabinetry, it is usually down to the 16th. It, it, it really depends on what you're doing, but 
in most of your guys' things, let's say, let's take framing for instance. Things can be within an eighth of an inch, maybe even a quarter, depending on your industry standard in your state. Um, but the whole point is that you don't have to get familiar with 64, 30 seconds, all of that. Don't even worry about that. Familiarize yourself that there are 16 parts to every inch. You can also get, like I said, get one of these tapes that has these conveniently marked for you. So in every inch, you know, oh, there's my eighth, there's my quarter, there's my three eighths. And then the tiniest marks that aren't marked are all odd number sixteenths. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and fifteen. Those are the only names of sixteenths you will ever find. And see, I've named them here. And I've only named the odd ones because what are the even ones? Right, they're not sixteenths. They're either an eighth or a quarter or eighth form or half or eighth form or three quarters or eighth form. You guys following me with that? Mm -hmm. You don't have to do math. If you can't add and subtract, it's totally fine. All you gotta do is mark it out and then remeasure it. Um, oh my gosh, you've got a ton of questions here. Okay, let's get um, to them. I'm trying to get to them. Um, let me see. J just use a metric system. You don't need to use fractions. Yeah, we're not using the metric system. Um, I wish that we were, but this is on Fractions, so the imperial measuring system, which yes is outdated, but that's what we use here in America. So thank you for all your suggestions about converting to the metric system, <laughs> but that would also take me changing every single um, measuring device that I have in my shop because we are in the United States and this is what we use. <laughs> um, let me see, why don't you come over here and look and see what you got. Okay, let me see. Let's see. Oh, I hate measuring tapes, yes. Smartest way to find right measurements for drawer handles. Uh, claustrophobe, what exactly do you mean? Are you talking like, are you talking from like center to center? Like how you would find the center of where these holes go? Is that what you're talking, you're referring to? Please expand on that. Oh, geez. Okay. So there's like 30 messages. Okay. Miss Marvick. Oh, hey, Maria. Thank you. I always um, was not that great at math. Why don't carpenters use metric? Um, okay, Eric, we are beyond. We have passed the metric system comments. Um, are they drilled already? Okay. Uh, somebody's at helping me out here. Okay. Saw a wrench with 12 sixteenths. Are you sure that was 12 sixteenths? It wasn't like 12 millimeter and 16 millimeter? Um, Momo, the Miss Marvick was not my teacher. We were actually in kindergarten together. Let me see. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying to get to your comments. Silent Observer. Hey, how you doing? It's great to see you. Here you go. Even though I don't see you, Silent Observer, it was great to get your message. I'm very happy and honored that you um, sent me a, us a message like that. Um, so glad that everybody that has tuned in is here. You guys make this all worthwhile to do. Like, I just got off of my normal job and I'm doing this. I'm trying to help. And I know that every, lots of people have um, a difficult time with measuring. You want to pan over to here? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So my lovely assistant is trying to keep up with reading all of your comments as well as keep the eyes over here. Um, We're asking for one more example. Just want to make sure that, that she's good. And that's Erin Marquez. 55. Okay, let me grab a piece and we will. Okay, so if you don't have graph paper, that's completely fine. You can do this on anything. Any old stick of wood, piece of cardboard, something like that. And come down here with me. So. Let's just take a random measurement, okay? We're going to go four and a quarter, okay? And let's add something to it. Let's be weird here. How about we do 27 and 3 eighths, okay? So from here to here is four and a quarter. So if we're going to add 27 and 3 eighths to this four and a quarter without doing any math, we're going to put 27 and 3 eighths right at our starting point, okay? And then 
we can take a reading here and it is 31 and 5 eighths. So 27 and 3 eighths plus four and a quarter. Without doing any math, we have our answer, 31 and 5 eighths. That's how you do it. You take the number that you'd like to add. Okay, you, if you already have a, a piece of wood or whatever, and you take the measurement of that. Whatever you need to add to it or subtract, you can do this. So let's say 27 and 3 eighths, but I want to subtract four and a quarter. Go ahead and pan down here. So now, if I'm going to add, I'm going to start here. But since I'm subtracting, I'm going to start my 27 and 3 eighths here. Okay? And then we're going to go back. This is already four and a quarter. We're going to go back. So 27 and 3 eighths minus four and a quarter, 23 and an eighth. That easy. No math. Great shortcut. Um, Jack cuts hair. My wife says I'm off on my measurements. <laughs> um, what are you, Jack, what measurements have you been giving her um, about what type of things? Which is a lot of times why women won't believe a man's measurements because, you know, they always say that their fish that they caught was this big and really it was a minute. So not everybody, it's not a shot at men. 1977 War Chief says, but you did math. I did math without having to do it because I marked it out and then just placed it on there and I saw what it was. If I would have did math, I would have had to convert these fractions. Okay, we have, what did I just do? 27 and 3 eighths minus four and a quarter, okay? So we'd have to convert all this. This would convert down to two eighths. Two eighths out of three eighths, okay? So three eighths minus two eighths is one eighth. 27 minus four, 23 and an eighth. Same thing I got without having to do any math. I didn't have to convert my fractions. I didn't have to reduce anything. All I did was measure it out, put a mark, and put my, um, my other mark towards that. Take a reading at the end. There we go. Everybody following on that? It says that's cool and thank you and hearts and laughing and um, unworldliness 825. When I build cabinets, I switch to metric tape measure. Eliminates a lot of mistakes. I'm sure that it does. No 7225 AF. Shortcuts are the only way to make math make sense. Yes, and shortcuts help you understand... Okay, that's why that's done. A lot of math for me was not understanding. Algebra, where do you put an, a letter in it? I didn't get that, still don't get it, okay? But I can do math like this all day long. Um, also a trick, another trick, without having to do any of that, uh, marking and things like that. Hold on, let me get a new, new sheet of paper here. You know, like my lovely Mayan hardwood pad? Again, if you buy graph paper, usually each little square is a quarter inch by a quarter inch. So it's very easy if you don't even have a tape measure, but you have graph paper, you can measure things. Because every four, every four squares is one inch. Okay, what was I gonna show? Oh, so let's just say you wanna go, uh, what's, what is half of seven eighths? Anybody know a quick trick? All you have to do is double the bottom number. Half of seven eighths, seven sixteenths. That's it. You don't have to do any math. You don't have to divide what's, you know, half but, of seven. How did you get the sixteenths? Oh, okay. Well, sixteenths is because, so seven sixteenths plus seven sixteenths equals seven eighths. That's where I got the sixteenths. Okay. Because what I wanted to do is find out what half of seven eighths was. All you gotta do is double the bottom number. Mm -hmm. Works with anything, um, anything that's an eighth, okay? You can't say, what about, you cannot do this trick with quarters. If you wanna know what half of any sort of eighth is, let's say five eighths. What's half of five eighths? Anyone? That's right, you double the bottom number. So half of five eighths is five sixteenths. Because five sixteenths plus five, so, oh, five sixteenths plus, I can't write, 
5 sixteenths. You add the top, that's 10 sixteenths. You reduce it, right, which is divide the biggest number you can into both of them, which would be 2. 2 goes into 10, 5. 2 goes into 16, 8. It's, it's that easy. Just double the bottom number. Don't worry about doing math. What else we got? Just a lot of people saying clever and thank you and... You guys are, are super welcome. Um, you know, a lot of people keep saying, I don't know how to read a tape and I didn't understand the first thing that, that you did about this. And, and that's fine. I'm trying to familiar you guys, familiarize you guys that each inch is the same. Whether it's starting at zero or starting at 150. Mm -hmm. After each inch is the same. So these are broken up into 16 equal parts, okay? Usually on the tape measure. Yeah, usually on the tape measure. And on this, this is just a, an embellished inch that I drew. And I drew this little key down here that says one inch. In one inch, it contains 16 sixteenths, eight eighths, four quarters or fourths, and two halves. Now, if that's confusing to you, that just means that 16, there's 16 parts. Eighths, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths. Quarters, you have one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, one inch. Halves, half, half. So Aaron Marquez 55 says, so would half of a quarter be an eighth? Absolutely. Okay. Coco Monk 63. Why do some tapes have a diamond marks at the nine and a quarter and 38 and three eighths, et cetera? Um, diamond marks. Well, I'm not absolutely positive what you're talking about because my tape does not have a diamond on the quarter, the nine and a quarter. But if you look at tapes, you see how it's marked at the one, at the 12, the one foot mark, right? Then it's marked at the two foot mark. Then it's marked at the three foot mark. But did you notice that there are some that are in red, like the 32 and the 16? That is because this is, um, this is for laying out studs in a house because you want them at 16 inches on center. You wanna look down here? 16 on center. So, the middle of one stud would be there. The middle of another stud would be here, if I had long enough. So these red um, squares around the 16, the 32, 48, 64, those are what we call on layout. So if you are framing a house or framing a wall, that those points should be right where your studs are. At the zero point, at the 16, at the 32. And usually studs are an inch and a half wide. The space between your studs is gonna be 14 and a half inches. And instead of measuring 14 and a half and then an inch and a half, you can just simply go and mark 16 and put the center of your stud there. If you're not sure what a stud is, the stud is one of those vertical pieces of lumber that are inside your, your wall um, with drywall on it, probably drywall on it, um, that standard here in California is every 16 inches. There's 16 on center. You're getting a lot of people telling you California framing, 19 and a quarter. You have a mark on your thing that do, it is showing it. Diamonds are nine and three sixteenths oh. for spacing I-beams. Diamonds thought, are for eye joist layout. Yes, yes. So the person I heard was saying nine and a quarter and I did not have a diamond there. 19 and a quarter, yes I do. Yes. And these tapes are useful for many, many trades and there's specific um, things that they need to lay out for. Um, let me see. Lots of times, little black diamond, you should have it on your tape. I think it's nine and three sixteenths. Uh, the diamonds are for 19 inch centers, same as 16 inch. Right, yeah, and you can and do A lot that. of people and are coming in telling you exactly what it is. Okay, and there's nothing on my nine anywhere, okay? 19 and a quarter, or three sixteenths, yes, it's there. Okay. All right, okay. well, I might have been saying it incorrectly. My, my apologies. That's okay. okay. Nine and a quarter is not standard residential framing um, measurements, but that was to Lance Foster. Correct. Sorry. Okay, so back to the measuring part. We're trying to teach P 
people who do not know how to use a tape measure or add fractions. We're teaching them to do that without um, having to do the math. So let's try to not complicate their minds, okay? Because this can be a lot to somebody that is not familiar with it. And I realize we have a lot of pros coming in here and chiming in. I do appreciate your input. Uh, let's stick to the subject matter at hand, if we can. So let's do another one. Um, anybody want to give me two random measurements? Let's see here. Let's see. Can you please add and subtract on the board again? Sure. All right. So we have one entire inch here, okay? Let's say we want to go... Uh, let's, let's go... What is 15 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths? Okay, that's going to be pretty easy because it's simply, it's, it's in the same, uh, it's, it's all 16. So we can just minus 15 minus 9. That's 6 16, right? Which is going to be 3 8. But if you don't know how to do the math yet, that's fine. Again, we're going to use this. We're going to go 15 16, right? Minus 9 16. So here is our 9 16 from here to here. Okay, so now what we do is we place this on the 15 16 mark and we go to here, 3 eighths. That is what 15 16 minus 9 16 is. All you have to do is whatever you're minusing or uh, whatever you're subtracting or adding, measure it out. Then you can do like I did here and put it on your tape measure and go, oh, that's what it is. No math involved. No converting fractions, nothing. It's just, I wanted to know what 9 sixteenths was subtracted from 15 sixteenths. So I started on a zero, placed my board on zero, and I made a mark at 9 sixteenths. So that I know that, I mean, this is not true to scale, but this is supposed to be 9 sixteenths, right? We were minus, subtracting that from 15 sixteenths. Put that on the 15 goes right to three eighths. There's your answer. No math, just marking. You, you can mark, right? If everybody can mark. And if you aren't familiar with what uh, the names of all these little lines are, that's okay too. Get yourself one of these type of tapes. These type of tapes below here are, if you already know the numbers, you already know the names of all the little lines. But this one can be super helpful because it's a, it's a dead giveaway. And then the lines in the, between these markings that are not marked are sixteenths. We got any more questions? Um, no, a lot of thank yous. Some people are saying it's cheating. Um, you know, it's not cheating. It's getting the same exact measurement. And this is a good way to double check. So if you're not real sure about your math just yet, this is what you want to be doing to check your math. A lot of times you don't even have to mark it. Here's another trick. Okay, I'm gonna take a look right here. You just set your two tape measures together, okay? Let's say we have, we wanna know what 12 minus, I'm doing it upside down, so. 12 minus four and five eighths is. I put my tape on the 12 and I go out to four and five eighths and it's right here. So it's seven and three eighths. Set it at the 12, measure back four and five eighths. Here's my mark, seven and three eighths. It's, it's that easy. Subtracting four and five eighths from 12 inches can be done with two tape measures, just like this, to get your answer. Or you can mark on a board the, the same way that I've demonstrated a few times. You don't need to be a math whiz. You don't even have to understand the fractions yet. That will familiarize you with it. Um, can you please explain measuring width of a saw blade? You want to do that another time? Or? The width of a saw blade? Um, I think. Like the curve? The tooth itself? What are we talking here measuring a saw blade? Okay, let me see. Is this see. a circular saw blade, a band saw blade? What kind of blade are we talking? Okay. Um, I'm looking. Um, a lot of saw blades 
if you get a professional one, they're usually true to size. Like the ones that I use for cabinet making are a true eighth of an inch. Um, and where do you get those? Those are not ones that I buy from Home Depot. Those are not professional grade saw blades that they have there. Um, so you would have, they're, they're usually under an eighth of an inch. Um, let me see. The hole to the teeth. I have no idea. Here. I'm going to give this over to you so that you can read them because you read them faster. Okay. I take that you do big barbecue cutting boards. I do big cutting boards. Um, they could be for anything you like. Uh, let's see. Let's say you want to cut something. One and a half feet. Okay. Ballyhoo says... Let's say you want to cut something to one and a half feet, so you need to account for blade width. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the best thing to do is just make sure that if you're going to cut something, let's say this is your ballyhoo. If this is your one and a half feet, you can put, make sure you put your saw on the other side of the line and make sure you cut there. That way you don't have to account for it. Um, but if you do need to account for it, let's go over here. Let's go over here to the saw. Let's see. All right. So you want to know how to measure your saw blade? That's pretty, pretty easy. This is what you do. I, I usually, if, for using fine measurements like this, I usually don't hook my tape measure on it. I usually start at the one inch mark. Okay. And let's see. Let's get a, a square tooth here. So you see that? That's one eighth of an inch. That's just how you measure it. Uh... Yeah, oh, what kind of boots do I wear? Keens. How about 564 fourths? Okay, top knocks, uh, 564 fourths. You'd have to divide that by two to get your 30 seconds. So that is 564 fourths. Let's go over here. Since you want to know. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be just past the halfway mark from the 16th. So it'll be two and a half, 30 seconds. Let's see, adding, subtracting fractions. Kenny is up, yes, that's what we're doing. Uh, cove on table saw. Not what, sure what your question is. Please explain the end of the tape measure and why it moves. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, thank you for asking that, Brent. Can you hold that, please? So, if you're new to a tape measure, these ends here are made to slip. And the reason they slip is because if you're measuring on the outside of something, let's say you do what you call hooking your tape. You hook your tape there, that is a, a, a good measurement. Okay, um, that's the way to do it. If I was doing an inside measurement, then this piece here, the hook, is going to come in. So this amount of the, that this moves is equal to how thick this is. So that way you get an accurate reading, whether you're hooking your tape or whether you're putting it on the inside. Does that make sense? When I was a kid, I always wondered, why are these so loose? Like, how can I get a, re a reading? And then I go, oh, that's why. Because it depends if you're hooking or you're pushing. <coughs> Okay, how do you make the drunken cutting boards? I make cutting boards. Uh, how do I make the drunken cutting boards? Pretty easy. Take two different pieces of wood, put them on top of each other, double-sided sticky tape. Make all of your, um, your first round of cuts in them. Take them apart. Alternate one piece from one board so that you have two, um, like let's say maple, walnut, maple, walnut. Then you glue those up. Take them together. Put them again when they're done drying. Put them together again, and you cut the other way. So that way your cuts are a mirror image. You have The key to drunken cutting boards is you have to cut them so that they are exactly the same. And the only way that you can get that without like a CNC machine or a perfect um, template of some sort or jig is to sandwich them together, two-sided tape, and cut them at the same time with your bandsaw blade at a 90 degree angle with no flex in your bandsaw table. Because that will, depending on the thickness of your board, throw your cuts off. What's the easiest way to measure angles? 
Same difference of seven, says that. Same difference. The easiest way to measure angles, it all depends on where the angle's at. You can use, um, you can use a square. And you can go like this to measure your angles. Let's see, let's take a, let's just do a random angle here. We're gonna go. So what we're using is we're, this is, see it says pivot. You put that up against the board, okay? And then you go right here, see this? Let's see this right here, 25. That's a 25 degree angle right there. That's how you can do it because you can just move this thing like this keeping the pivot point up against it and go, oh, you want 35? Here's a 35 degree angle. Okay, so we've got 25, 35, and now let's go 45 because this is a true 45 here and here where this is a 90. Okay. You can also find things that are called, um, they're an angle gauge. It's um, pretty much two pieces of plastic that, that pivot together and it, when you separate those pieces of plastic to um, go along with your angle, it will give you a reading on what that angle is. It all depends on what you can get in there, where it's at, de de will determine how you can determine the angle. Poker player asks, what about the measurement at the bottom of the tape when going from inside to inside of a wall? Oh, that's a good one. That can be different. Um, so if you're going from an inside to an inside, you know, you basically have to bend your tape. But the best way to avoid that, let me see, do I have anything that's inside to inside here? The best way to avoid that is start at your first inside point, okay? Place your tape up against it and measure out. Let's say it's like around a three or four foot space. What I would do is take and mark, let's say 12 whatever you want, just remember what you measured, 12 inches, okay? Against this inside, okay? This inside to that 12. Then I would measure against the other side of it, and let's say it was 28 and an eighth, okay? So I have 28 and an eighth, 28 and one eighth plus that 12. So I have one eighth, It'd be 40 and an eighth for an exact from inside measurement to inside measurement. Um, usually I don't do that just because I've gotten pretty good with putting this edge of the tape into the inside and then bending this up and <coughs> figuring what it would be. But I mean, after 24, 25 years, you could. People are so rude. Um, that's Wait. exactly just... You can block anybody that wants to be rude. Well, they're Let's just see. rude. Just rude. Let's see. I'm over it. <laughs> Don't mansplain to me. Um, well, I would have to be a man to mansplain to you. But I do what I want, so don't tell me what to do. All right. Do we have any more questions? Um, let me see. A lot of people have metric options and metric opinions. Yeah, we're not, we're, I appreciate everybody's input <laughs> on the metric, but we're not using metric here. This is not a, a how to use metric and how it's so much better. Yeah, we get it. Okay. That's not what we use here. So let's move along. Well, we know it's jokes, but sometimes jokes are a little much. Why don't you just use a laser pointer? Some of us need mansplaining. Nobody needs that. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody needs mansplaining. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, a... Uh, and mansplaining is really talking down to a person um, when you are explaining something. And there's really no need for that. And it really says a lot about the person that's doing the mansplaining and the type of way that they feel about themselves. Silent Observer says, cabinet maker by day, math teacher by night. Yes, Silent Observer. Thank you for that. Yep. Oh, hi, Kona. He can't even add fractions. Uh, same difference, 07. Yes, when you find the individual gap off a big space, do you put a beam in the middle of the line? I'm not sure what you mean by that. A beam in the middle of the line. Uh, the free outdoors says, do you instruct anywhere or are you a master carpenter? 
Uh, free outdoors. Um, I have not instructed anywhere yet besides on TikTok, but I am um, in the works of getting workshops here in my shop, maybe on the weekends, maybe one weekend a month um, for women mostly and whoever else would like to join. But um, yes, I've been a carpenter, a custom cabinet maker, licensed in the state of California, doing business <laughs> for over 25 years. Okay, thank you for your knowledge. Hi, Kona. Um, let me see. I used my expert eye. Good thing I don't uh, pay for that type of job. Amy, you inspired me to build things, and I got a few decent tools. Do you have a puppy tape brand? I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, preferred tape brand? Oh, oh, for the probably for the double sided. Yes, I do. My preferred tape brand I actually don't have here. It's made. Um, it's called Comalon. It's made by Lowe's. They seem to have a really bright, like green face instead of these kind of off yellow ones. This is just a Dewalt. Um, and there are different levels of tapes. If you need to get into 30 seconds and 64s, you need to get yourself a, um, a class A or class one. I think it's a class one tape measure. Um, but in my experience, I've never had the need to use one. If you're doing um, machine machining or something like that, maybe that would be what you would need. Explain trim angle cutting. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> explaining trim angle cutting. Well, that is going to be a whole nother show. That'll but be a whole you show. Like, you can look on my page and I have a full video on how to measure and how to cut crown, which my technique is seems to have um, sparked the interests of carpenters everywhere <laughs> who would like to tell me how they do it and how my way is wrong. But like I said, um, I'm also licensed and I'm not sure if they are. There's many ways to do things. My way is not the only way. Old school Stanleys. Um, let Stanleys me see. Are good. Did you know your tape measure is also a pencil eraser? Uh, yeah, with the rubber part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can never get trim angles right. It always leaves gaps. That's definitely going to be another video. I have a feeling, and we have quite a few people interested in talking Kona. about Kona. Yes. Look, at least the shop dog. He's a good boy. He is um, hungry, so he, he wants to be all up in my mix. Okay, can you explain how to read a tape measure one more time? Sure. Okay, so how to read a tape measure is each inch is the same, no matter if it's 12 and 5 eighths or it's 150 and 3 16 It's all the same. Each inch is broken up into 16 equal pieces, just like a pie, okay? Um, and so the smallest uh, marks on your tape measure are going to be the ones that are called 16th. Even though this one that says here 1 8th is a 16th, it's not called a 16th, it's called an 8th because it would be 2 16ths, which would need to reduce. Okay? So if you want to know how to read a tape measure, it's pretty easy if you start off if you're, um, by getting one of these types that already has the eighths, quarters, and um, half and three quarters all marked for you. Because these small numbers here, these small ticks here, <clears throat> are sixteenths. Just like up here, you have one sixteenth, three sixteenths, five sixteenths, seven sixteenths, and so on, where you would think that this one would be two sixteenths, right? Well, it, it, it is still two sixteenths. All of these are two sixteenths, no matter their name. But when you have two sixteenths, it's not a proper fraction because only proper fractions means it cannot be reduced anymore. So if it's an even number, it's not a proper fraction. All you got to do, two sixteenths, you cut this number in half. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. A lot of people are jumping on saying 30 seconds okay. in an inch. Okay. Just letting you know. So instead of 16, if you're wondering about 30 seconds, that means that in between every single 16th mark is a 30 second. Because this inch or a pi, if you want to consider it like that, is broken into 32 pieces. Whereas the inch here is broken into 16. Okay, perfect. Hopefully that makes sense. 
Yep. I just say how many inches and then three little lines. <laughs> and if you mean three little lines, like one, two, three. Oh, wait. Let me get those out of here. One, two, three. Then, yeah, three little lines is three sixteenths. So if you come across an odd number, like three or five little lines or seven little lines, those are all sixteenths. So you're, you have the right track. If you're calling those three little lines, one, two, three, it's three sixteenths. You already got it. So this guy would get laughed off his job site if he showed up to a frame with that tape. <laughs> um, why is there like a special tape that you use or are people just really unkind to you? Because I have seen guys show up on job sites with like a little 12 ounce hammer and we have laughed at that. Mm -hmm. It's good to have fun on the job site, but not to bully each other. We're not here for that. Uh, let's see here. Um, I've been waiting for my husband to frame in a closet for four years. Maybe I'll tackle it myself. Yes, frame it in yourself. You already know. Your tape measure is a dead giveaway. This is the start. This is where you should put your stud, 16. Okay? Then it shows you again. This is where your next stud goes, the center of your stud. All the red boxes around the numbers are four studs, okay? You see that, you, do you notice these little numbers that are red? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it starts over after every foot. That's so you can say three feet, four inches. Oh. So you don't have to go, how many inches is that total? Well, if it's three feet, it's also 36 inches. And if it's three feet, four inches, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 inches. Again, no map. This, this, the, a measuring tape is a wonderful tool, even if you do not know how to do math. You really don't know how to do, have to know how to do math. Do you really ever need to measure that small? Um, absolutely. I, it, I've had to measure things that were 30 seconds, half of a 16th. But you also do fine cabinetry and, and that carpentry. Is for fine cabinetry and things like that, that it's very crucial to have exact measurements. Um, if you're doing something framing, it doesn't have to be exact. It could be within an eighth or so. Um, other things that you might build may not be as um, demanding for you to be that precise. But uh, at least you'll know what the measurement is by remembering these. LOL, I have an old house, studs are 24 inches, found out the hard way. Ooh. Are you the person with the 24 inch um, spacing on their studs, is that, or did you also have plaster walls? Oh, yeah. Because um, here in the state of California, for drywall in a lot of residences, most residences, it is code to have them um, 16 inches on center. There are times when you can do 18, but it just really depends on what you're building, what the code is, if you're building to code. If you're just building for fun, do what cool. you want. Um, I'm reading. Uh, we have to have at least 30 foot tapes. We set metal buildings. Oh, that was. Okay, I get, that was probably the, you get laughed off the, okay, yeah. And this for me as a cabinet maker is a big tape. The only time I would use a 25 foot measuring tape is to go measure the job. I'm not using those types of measuring tapes here in my shop. Louis Boy 91 says no one will get laughed at a job site to bully with that tape. I'm a union guy. Grown men have them. <laughs> yes, grown men do have them. And that's a great point. And you know, um, it seems sometimes like everybody has an opinion and that's fine. <laughs> um, and if, you know, that would, that's horrible to laugh at somebody for the things for that trying. they bring when they are showing up to work. It's hard <laughs> enough to get people to want to come in on time or do the job, let alone make them feel belittled because of their material, their um, tools aren't up to snuff or to you, whatever. Nice. This is why we need to be more open with each other, welcoming to people and not saying things like, <laughs> I'd get laughed off the job. You might want to work with different people if they're going to laugh at you for your tools you bring. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to build a kitchen island myself. Can you give any good tips? Uh, building a kitchen island? Well, I have no idea what you want to build. Uh, what do you want it to look like? I've built hundreds and hundreds of islands before. 
But if you actually have a plan of what you want to build, if you want to email me, I can help you out with that. I can tell you exactly what every piece should be, how much material you would need, and what type of tools you would need um, to construct the island that you want to build. I'd probably get laughed off the site because they're expected to know how to read the tape. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That's a high expectancy, you know, with no shop classes um, or very little shop classes being taught in schools and with kids not doing much besides looking at their phone and playing video games, it's really difficult to find anybody that knows how to read a tape measure. And I know for a lot of women, it's intimidating because who do you ask? Help, I need an oversized barn door, but buying is expensive. Tips on building a door. Structure? Well, for building anything, if you guys want me to my advice on how to build something, I really need to know what you want the finished product to look like. That will um, help me engineer the plan of how it will go together. And you are always welcome to email me. Um, my email is on my bio. It's also the same as my screen name on here, two girls, one cut with a double T at gmail.com. I'm perfectly um, happy to help you guys plan your projects or at least tell you what you need to get started. Can't believe how much I just learned. Never knew that it had an eraser on it. Thanks for teaching me. <laughs> Here's something that you may not have known. Okay, so if you have a, a piece of something, let's say, let's say you have a piece of wood and you have a pencil mark on it and you intend to stain this. If you go ahead and you erase, you use an eraser on wood, it will show up when you stain it. So if you ever use an eraser on anything that you plan to stain, you need to sand, sand it off, or it will show up through your stain. Um, let me see. I love building stuff, and this is embarrassing, but I measure with a string and take it to Home Depot. <laughs> hey, That's, if you use what you works, got. Uh, you use what you got. Elastic so it doesn't yeah. you know, grow or whatever, but if yeah. whatever way works for you, do it. Yeah. Nobody should talk down to you because you have a way that works. Use what you got. I never would. Nope. I'm a oh. mom with two boys and my husband. Um, okay. I am the only one that can read a tape measure. You rock. That's awesome of you. And you should make sure you teach your boys and your husband. Because when they come and tell you their, their fish was 12 inch fish. <laughs> you go, yeah, I think it was more like 11 and a quarter. Don't well, get crazy. Well, who cares about tape measures? Let's see. Hammers. <laughs> Hammers. Hammers. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, Are you people, hungry? I think he's hungry. He's hungry. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, anybody need a recap? Do you know what you're doing now? Um, I will be, excuse me, I will be downloading this live here in case... In case you missed anything or you want to go over, I will be down downloading this live um, onto my YouTube channel. It's the same name on YouTube, Two Girls, One Cut. You can go to my YouTube channel by going to my bio and pushing the little play button. Um, I'll see. I'll be messaging you for tips and tricks from now on. Thank you. That's same difference 07. Yeah, anybody that has any questions, um, if you're not able to answer them, uh, if I was not able to answer them here, feel free to email me. I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. How do you measure square feet? Square feet, that's a good one. Okay, let's go right here. How do you measure square feet? Let's just take whatever this board is here, okay? You measure it. It is four feet, okay, by, It's almost six feet, so let's just call it six feet, okay? So to measure square footage, the formula is length times width. So we just went over there and measured the board, and it was six feet this way, four feet this way. Four times six. What is it? Quick. 24. You just gave it away. You asked. So you have 24 square feet. That's it. Really that easy. Okay. Whatever your measurements are, if you're measuring the square footage of your room and you want to, let's say, lay down flooring, okay? 
and you want to know how much flooring do you need first thing that i personally would do would be to let's say the room looks like this looks like alaska jack's jealous of your hair oh alaska jack you see that <laughs> i've got some great coming in. okay so let's say this is the shape of somebody's room they want to know how much carpet do i need to buy what's this going to cost me the first thing i'm going to do since this is weird right here right and it's not just a square section it off measure this measure this okay let's say that this was is is 12 feet from here to here okay let's say this is 10 feet wide so we're going to measure each square I, the reason i squared these off is because it's a lot easier to do than to try to figure out what the square footage is when it's not square it could be a rectangle that's fine but when it's all different like this so i'm going to go let's say that this is um eight feet and let's say that this is four and this is four 12 is my total see so right here in this square i have eight by ten right here in this one let's say it's about a foot off we're gonna go four by nine this looks like maybe about an eight foot this is just for shits and giggles so four by eight okay so we got eight by ten that's eighty four times nine that's thirty six four times eight is thirty two add those three numbers 80 36 32 we have eight 148 square feet okay there you go it's it's that easy don't let it intimidate you and if you don't know just ask i'm your friend the carpenter ask me anything uh let me see uh and this is how i do square footage all the time it's that it's, it's easy like that oh tay man thinks this might be a joke <laughs> is this a joke jokes do you? you you do have good jokes i can't think of any right this second but uh i do have some good ones i've been a cabinet maker for 14 years i still learn new things every day from my amazing co-workers and that's Katie Olson, 17. Katie, good to meet another female cabinet maker. Um, same here. I, I don't know everything. There's plenty of things that I learn every day as well. Mm -hmm. And that's good to have that open mind and not think that you know it all and that you can't be taught. So Joe Mama asks, how much is that sheet of plywood cost in California? Uh, well, the interesting thing is that the prices don't really go up for California. It's pretty much industry standard. The plywoods that we have in California don't come from California, but they're distributed all over the United States, no matter if they are um, imported or domestic. Domestic usually costs more, but every piece of plywood depends on the size, the thickness, the material, um, and the availability usually. What's the easiest way to measure how to mark for outlets that need cut? For outlets that need cut. Okay, so we have an outlet outlet boxes okay so what you want to do is on an outlet box you usually have this little spot for a screw what i do is i measure from right just underneath that screw to just above that screw because if you cover up that screw in your outlet box you're not going to be able to get the outlet to screw into it so from the screw i go right above it maybe a 16th above maybe a 16th below this one the sides you can cut right on the sides, but you want to cut out for your outlet box right to where your screw can still hook on because they have these little feet that look like this, right? And then the screw. So as long as the little foot on the bottom of the outlet has something to rest on, which is your whatever you're cutting it out for, you just keep it tight. I don't know if that's a good explanation for you, but it's... Uh, Without an outlet here to use, that's about the best explanation I can give you. You have quite a few comments on that you had the math wrong on your square footage. On my square footage? Mm -hmm. Eight times 10? I is think 80. it was the 844. 844? Eight plus four is 12 plus four. Oh, oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, I just guessed at what these might be. But yeah, you're right. But if it was four by nine, then it would be 36. <laughs> so this should have been 
Whoever pointed out that my math was wrong, you are correct. This should have been two, and this should have been two. So this would have been two by nine, which would be 18, and this would be two by eight, which would be 16. So I would have, and I didn't it, realize that I just made that into that. So this is gonna be eight, nine, 10, 114 square feet. Also carpet comes in 12 foot wide rolls. So a 10 by 12 is 120 square feet. You'll need 14 yards of carpet. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of education happening here. You are correct, but let's say somebody has a heat seeming iron and heat seeming tape then it doesn't matter what they come in because they can splice it to be whatever. I also laid carpet as a, as a kid. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're gonna wrap it up. There will be more on this another day. Um, I will be making more videos about measuring and things like that. Um, and we'll have some more, a lot more on measuring because there's it's such a vast topic. Joke, what's a kangaroo on a pogo stick? Hopping mad? The <laughs> lazy kangaroo. Lazy kangaroo. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, you know what? You think all day, and so your brain's a little full sometimes. So to teach, teach how to read a tape measure after work is asking a lot, and you conquered that. And I'm sure everybody is appreciative of your efforts because I don't see anybody else coming out and... <laughs> making efforts <laughs> yeah well there's a million people on here doing all kinds of tips and tricks and everything like that and um you know a lot of people have their own way to do everything just totally fine if you find a method that works for you and you're comfortable with great i'm showing you the methods that work for me and helped me to be the cabinet maker that i am today and mm -hmm. be able to do fine precise work and have accurate measurements besides when i read my measurements wrong which i have <laughs> done before um but that's also why instead of just doing the math on paper, you can double check it with doing your marks and things that I showed at the beginning of this live. And it really helps um, double check your math without having to do the math. Um, do you have a CNC cutting machine? Do I have a CNC cutting machine? No, I do everything by hand. Yeah, and you do all of your bath on like by hand by yeah, yeah. you do ev all of your Let designing me, you guys want to see the kind of math that i do hold on <laughs> <sighs> what do we got here uh real carpenters don't need math <laughs> <laughs> yeah that looks like about a 16th to me okay Thank you from a 73 year old female. I still need to learn. I think everybody needs to learn. Okay, so let's see, what do we got here? All right, let's just talk, look at this. Here's one of the pages of math that I had to do. And these are for face frame parts. So I also, besides not having a CNC machine, I also did not in my entire cabinet making career use any kind of computer program. It's up here. So all of my measurements, hundreds and thousands of them come out of my head, which makes me double checking these things so much easier when I use the tips and the tricks that I just showed you. Um, and I'm talking about even all the way down to laying out which parts I'm gonna cut out of every sheet for maximum yield, the size of the part, the name of the part, and what cabinet it goes to. When in doubt, lay it out. You got JRDN me. says that. Yeah, exactly. Whoever said that is a genius. <laughs> I mean, I'll have lists of parts and parts and parts, and this may not make a lot of sense, but once you get into it, then you go, oh, totally makes sense. Nope. Oh, okay. So, yep. maybe we have time for one more question, if there is any. Um, I hope you don't go through slight memory loss during premenopause. The forgetfulness is real. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's called slight memory loss, but holy <laughs> shit, like, I'm like, I just asked two times today if it was Thursday. Yeah, you did. And it's Tuesday. Yeah, right? there it we is. go. Okay. There we go. Well, well, people are impressed. They think you're awesome. People are still obsessed with hammers, and I'm not understanding, but I'm not a carpenter. You are. Well, there's a lot of different types of hammers used for a lot of different types of things. There's different weights. There's different heads. Um, you know, a framer is going to use a big, heavy, probably 24, 32-ounce hammer with a waffle type of head where I just use the regular old, what is this, a 16 ounce? 
That's a good old one. I just use a regular hammer. I've never had to use anything different. Um, I do have smaller hammers, but not in my shop. I wouldn't use a small hammer for anything. I like a good sledge. What are the cons of using a CNC machine and software? Uh, the cons of using a CNC machine and software is some of them that you basically need to take a course to learn how to use. <laughs> They're also highly expensive or can be. Um, okay. And I learned the old school way. If you look around my shop, I have all hand tools, all the way down to my face frame easel, which is a combination door press. I don't use, I don't even use a computer program. I don't have a computer in my shop besides my cell phone. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's very, it's, it's, it's a good thing if you have it, but if you want to do things by hand, then you probably wouldn't use a CNC machine. Um, my child wants to take woodworking in 10th grade in the fall, such a wonderful skill. That's awesome. Encourage your kid to take the woodworking. They were sexualizing your hammer. They called it a girly hammer. It's a girly hammer. Well, I am a girl, so, so. thank you for the compliment. <laughs> and I mean, what does that even mean? Right. What does that even mean? It's a girly hammer. Well, this thing can hit as hard <laughs> as your big manly hammer. Does it have balls? Because last time I checked, balls were very sensitive. Uh, oh, let's see. Um, I love seeing other chicks in the trades. I spent 80 hours just to learn the software. Yeah. As someone who runs a CNC and software, it takes a lot to learn. Yeah, and I personally didn't have time to learn the CNC. I don't have room in my shop, and I cut everything out and do my, all my own measurements. No yep. computer. Old school. Yep. Gen X, baby. Drafting was one of my favorite classes in high school. Oh, I tried to take a drafting class, and I... It was way over my head at the time. <laughs> I just said, oh, I have no idea. You know, the three-sided ruler, which I know now. And I was going to mention, and somebody just mentioned here, that nail guns rock. And I think your nail guns rock. Yes. Nail guns do rock. And I bet you somebody's going to come in and say, well, that's a girly nail gun. I bet you have to use one, too. Nail guns are awesome. Um, my favorites have been Senko, Porter Cable, and DeWalt. Oh my gosh, this dog. Yes, he's yes, hungry. He's ready. All right, you guys, okay. we got to go because the dog is hungry. So we'll be back. If you have any questions or you need help with a project, feel free to email me. I'm here to help you. I totally don't even mind. Just let me know. Um, I'm an administrator in public school system in Virginia. We need to pr promote the trades. Yes, absolutely need to promote the trades. Handcrafted is the Thank more beautiful work, anyways. Is way more beautiful work anyways for handcrafted. As yes. As uh -huh. And Love handcrafted things versus CNC. Well, you can mass produce a lot of things with CNC. You know, it takes, it takes the craftsmanship out of it. Um, it's a computer making it. I see people that, um, you know, on here and other places that only use um, CNC machines uh, to cut out some of their stuff. And then they call, the, they, they call that woodworking. And while it is a form of woodworking, they're not the actual ones doing the work. Um, so that takes the hand crafted out of it. If it's made by a computer or, um, yeah, it's not, it's not real craftsmanship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, fourth year carpenter here currently in school in Edmonton, Alberta, so in Canada. Hello, um, Canadian carpenter, that's awesome. Okay, always love your lives, you know your craft, thank you. I need a dog house built for a German shepherd. I'm 70 years old. Oh, if you need that dog house built, at least um, if you want me to help <laughs> you design it, it, I can do that free of charge. All right. Well, Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, there will be more on this. Like I said, if you missed this live or you want to go back over it, I'm going to download it onto my YouTube channel this evening. Um, you can find my YouTube channel on my bio page. Just hit the little play button that's down below my little face and name. <laughs> okay, so wrapping it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd love thank this. For, thank you. Thank Thanks, you for ladies. everybody that stopped by. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. You guys make it worth my while. Yep. Yep. Thank we'll you so you. much. See you later. Bye, Coda.